part two of our IGCSE chemistry revision series on electrolysis. Now in the part one video, I talked about two ways in which we will look at electrolysis at the IGCSE level. The first way is the electrolysis of molten liquids, so such as so, where we only have two different ions involved in our electrolysis. The positive one, which is the metal ion, and the negative one, which is the non-metal ion, which in this case, the positive metal ion is the lead 2 plus ion, or the cation, and um, attracted to the anode is the negative bromide ion. All right. So we looked at uh, the half equations involved, and we also looked at the physical changes that happened throughout the process of electrolysis. So in this video, we're going to look at the other example of electrolysis that we will be interested in in our IGCSE chemistry uh, revision, that is the electrolysis of aqueous um, solutions, or when ionic compounds are dissolved in a solvent, usually water, uh, resulting in aqueous solution containing four, usually four, different ions, two of which make up water, which is the H+, and the OH- ion, and the other two make up the ionic compound that we are going to dissolve. So, um, upon basic principles, what happens is the water ion will ionize into H+, and OH- ions, and they will attract to the um, uh, either the negative the negative anion or the positive cation, and it will basically separate the ionic compound. This is basically how dissolving works. And as you can see in the diagram, I deliberately uh, placed the H plus, the, the proton ions, very close to the, um, the negative anions from our ionic compound. And similarly, the OH minus ions close to the positive cations of our ionic compound, just to show you how the dissolving takes place and, and how it actually appears uh, when um, it's in solution. So basically in solution you have four different types of ions, that is the OH- ion and the H+, which form the water, and then and the, um, the other two, which form the ionic compound. So in this case, we're looking at aqueous sodium chloride. So sodium chloride ionic compound dissolved in water. So basically s salt water, brine. Alright, so when we apply an electrical uh, circuit into our solution, this is how uh, the ions will be attracted to uh, its respective electrodes. So the negative electrode, also known as the cathode, will attract the positive sodium ions and the positive hydrogen ions and similarly the anode the positive anode will attract the chloride ions and the hydroxide ions however at both electrodes only one ion per electrode i mean one type of ion per electrode will be discharged so for example on the cathode either the H plus or the Na plus ion will discharge. They will not, they'll, there will never be a case where they, uh, they both will discharge. Similarly, on the anode, only the Cl minus or the OH minus discharge. So there will be no case where both the Cl minus ion and the OH minus ion will discharge. All right. So how, so how do we determine which ion will discharge? So we are, going, we are going to set up a cheat sheet. We're going to set up a basic, basically um, a list of rules <clears throat> or a table of rules. And from this table of rules, you will memorize this and you will be able to solve all electrolysis questions. All right. So firstly, we look at the cathode. How do we determine which ion will, be, will discharge? Now the rule is, if the metal if the metal in the solution, in this example sodium, is more reactive than hydrogen, which it is, then the hydrogen ion will discharge. I'm going to talk about how it discharges later. So, uh, similarly, if the metal is less reactive than hydrogen, then the metal ion will discharge. Okay. So in this case, we're looking at a situation where the metal is more reactive than the hydrogen, resulting in our hydrogen ion discharging. 
So since <clears throat> the sodium ion is more reactive, uh, sorry, the sodium metal is more reactive than hydrogen, the sodium ion will not discharge, and instead the hydrogen ion will discharge. So what happens is, when it discharges, it's going to gain a sufficient number of electrons in order to form a neutral state. And in nature, the neutral state of hydrogen, it will exist as diatomic molecules of two hydrogen atoms per molecule. So we're going to need two positively charged H plus ions to gain two negatively charged electrons in order to form a neutral state of a diatomic molecule of hydrogen. Okay, So if we were to give it state symbols and the proper equation, that proper half equation that I would want you to write in the exam, it would be 2H plus aqueous add two, min uh, two electrons to give you our neutral hydrogen molecule. Now on the anode, uh, we can't use that sort of comparison. Now we must uh, look, look at it in a different way. So at the anode, we can see that the chloride ion and the hydroxide ion will be attracted to the anode, but only one of those two will discharge. So which one will discharge? Now we determine this by determining uh, how concentrated the solution is. So if the solution is concentrated, then the halogen ion will discharge. Okay. Just remember, when it's concentrated, the halogen ion will always discharge. Now, if, it, if the solution is dilute, then the opposite happens. The hydroxide ion will discharge, and the, um, the halogen ion will not discharge, basically. And the other case is when, if the solution does not contain any halogen ions, so instead, instead of the chloride ion, we have a um, sulfate ion, have a nitrate ion or carbonate ion, then the hydroxide ion will always discharge. Because usually any other ion apart from the halide ions or the hydroxide ion, they will never really discharge. Okay? At this level, we need to understand that only halide and hydroxide ions discharge. So the other anions such as the sulfate ion, the nitrate ion, or the carbonate ion, they will not discharge in electrolysis. Okay, so if our solution is a concentrated solution, then you will see the chloride, or in this case, the halide ion in general, discharging. And it will do so by losing two electrons in order to form two neutral, two neutral chlorine atoms, and they will exist as a diatomic molecule in the natural world. So two chloride ions will lose two electrons, so one electron each, or so one electron lost per chloride ion, in order to form two neutral chlorine atoms, which will exist as a diatomic chlorine molecule. So if we were to look at the exam style half equation that we should use, that is 2Cl- in aqueous, losing two electrons to form a neutral diatomic molecule of chlorine. And it will exist as a gas, as electrolysis will usually take place at the standard, uh, standard uh, conditions. Now let's look at the case where our solution is not concentrated but now diluted. As I said, the hydroxide ion will now discharge. So the equation that will be used to describe the discharge of the hydroxide ion is so. Four OH minus ions will lose four electrons in order to form uh, the neutral state of two water molecules and one diatomic oxygen molecule. So this would be the exam style half equation that we must use that is basically the same. <laughs> And uh, the product is hydrogen, uh, sorry, the project product is water in its liquid state and oxygen gas. Okay, so whenever hydroxide ions discharge, what's going to form is uh, water molecules and oxygen. Okay, so this is our cheat sheet looking at um, the, the explanation before. So this is, this is basically all you need to know. So at the cathode, if the metal involved as the ion is more reactive than the hydrogen, then hydrogen ion will discharge 
to form hydrogen gas. However, if the hydrogen is more reactive than the metal, then the metal ion will discharge. So in our previous example, we have a situation where the metal uh, sodium is more reactive than hydrogen. So therefore, the hydrogen ion will discharge as hydrogen gas, and the sodium ion will just stay in the solution. And then a name we give to an, an ion which stays in solution is a spectator ion. Okay. And on the anode, we have three cases that we must consider. So firstly, if our solution is concentrated, then the halogen ion will always, always, always discharge. Okay? If it's concentrated, think halogen ion. Okay? If it's diluted, then the hydroxide ion will discharge. Okay? Now, if there's no halogen ions present, and instead there's like the sulfate, the nitrate, or carbonate, or whatever, that is not halogen ion that is attracted to the anode, then the hydroxide ion will always discharge. Remember, at IGCSE questions, in IGCSE questions, only halogen ions and hydroxide ions discharge at the anode for, you know, for this electrolysis, okay? Cool. So let's look at another example. So in this case, I, I'd like to use uh, calcium bromide, CaBr2. So in this case, we have four different ions of, attracted to the anode, we have the bromide ion, the hydroxide ion, and attracted to the cathode, we have the calcium two plus ion and the proton, okay? So at the cathode, we must make a selection of the two ions which may discharge. So the two ions we must choose between are the calcium two plus ions or the hydrogen plus ion. So since calcium is more reactive than the hydrogen, then the hydrogen ion will always discharge, okay? So as a result, the half equation that takes place at the cathode is 2H+, plus, gaining two electrons for each atom. Sorry, one electron for each atom. Uh, so we have two uh, electrons gained overall, and it will form a diatomic molecule of hydrogen. Simple. It's the same, exact same as the previous example. And since it is a concentrated solution, what happens at the anode? Concentrated means the halide ion will discharge. So similar to our previous example, two halide ions will lose two electrons overall to form neutral state of bromine. Now, since this reaction is going to take place at standard conditions, bromine may exist as a liquid or gas, but generally bromine ex exists as a liquid. Okay, let's look at another example, diluted hydrochloric acid. So in this solution, we only have three ions. So it's the H plus ion, the Cl minus ion, and the hydroxide ion. So if we look at the cathode, this, is, this must be quite intuitive uh, at, at this point. Um, so at the cathode, uh, which ions uh, must we consider? There's only one ion to consider at the cathode, that is the H plus ion. So if it's the only one, then it will be the only one that's discharged, okay? But at the anode, since it's a diluted example, then always, always the hydroxide ions will discharge. Now let's look at a weird, not weird, sorry, a, a, um, a quite specific example, a, a very different example, yeah, that's the word. So at the cathode, we have a, uh, a selection between two cations that we must discharge. That is the copper two plus ion and the hydrogen ion. So which one will discharge? So in this case, the hydrogen ion, the hydrogen, hydrogen is more reactive than copper. So as a result, the other one will discharge. That is the copper two plus ion will discharge. So that's different from our previous two examples because in our previous two examples, the hydrogen ion discharges. Well, that's because the hyd hydrogen is less reactive than sodium and calcium, right? So in this case, hydrogen is more reactive than copper, so therefore the copper two plus ion will discharge. And the equation that will be involved is uh, in order to result in the neutral state of copper metal in a solid state. So it's gonna be Cu2 plus in aqueous, so that's the copper ion uh, in the solution, will gain two electrons and it will reduce to a copper atom, single copper atom. So how would we observe the reaction taking place? So what we 
observed at the cathode would be copper metal forming and it will deposit on the cathode. So it's, it's, it's like electroplating, all right, which I will talk about in the next video. <laughs> okay, so at the anode, we must make a solution between, uh, sorry, we must make a selection between the sulfate ion and the hydroxide ion. Okay, so remember, there's no halogens present here, so always the hydroxide ion will discharge. Okay, sulfate ions never discharge. Okay, I mean, at least at the IGCAC level, they will never discharge. At, at least for what you need to know, they will never discharge. Okay, so that's the equation that will be involved. I highly encourage for you to uh, memorize the cheat sheet that uh, I, I wrote on the on one of the slides. You can, you can come back and check it. And I feel, I feel if you were able to remember that and apply it to every single example, you will be fine. You will be able to do every single electrolysis question uh, in your exam, in your multiple choice exam, in your structure exams. I, I hope this video was helpful. I know it's kind of long. It's probably one of my longest videos. But I did put a lot of effort into it because I feel like um, the previous video was a, a little short. But... In these two videos, I should be able to have covered all you need to know for electrolysis. All right, hopefully. <laughs> uh, of course, there's going to be electroplating and refining copper, but that's that's almost like a a specific example of electro uh, of electrolysis. But the uh, these two videos, you should you should probably be able to grasp the whole concept uh, in general. All right, thank you very much for watching my video. I wish you all good luck in your revision and um, hope to make more videos soon.